Hello my sock universe, Lusk finally get a win again. We won! Well, after these two perfect results for my teams on the weekend, let's see what else happened in Europe's top leagues. Despite having been a Milan derby, I would argue that the biggest match this weekend happened in Manchester when City took on Arsenal, the top two teams in the Premier League, and they produced a classic. If this would have been a World Cup quarterfinal, semifinal, I think we would be talking for decades about this game. There were so many little details in there, so many things that still could be decisive for the season to come, even though the game ended in a 2-2 draw. First things first, Erling Haaland gives Manchester City the lead. It's his 100th goal in his 100th fifth game for Manchester City. Absolute crazy, crazy number. And you thought he had an off year last season. Are we judging him on the absolute wrong scale? I would argue so. City were very much on top, however they received a blow when Rodri was running next to Partey, seemingly got caught in the turf and got an injury, had to come off, couldn't really step on it. That could have a major impact because without Rodri, Manchester City usually don't play that well. And then to add insult to injury, yes, there was a Calafiori defensive mistake on the Holland goal, however then Calafiori makes good on his mistake with a brilliant shot from outside of the box to make it 1-1, scores a level and the game was on it was super intense then chances on both sides there were the two corners by Arsenal the first where Gabriel free header put it over the bar but then just before halftime same type of header and you have to see the way that the Arsenal offense worked and I'm using American football terms here on purpose because the way they were pushing and shoving around this was all well studied and Saki delivers a perfect corner Gabriel heads it in it was such a hard header that at first you saw it going in but it didn't feel like it was going because the net was not red accordingly. So Arsenal with a huge high that was of course major injury time given as well and then Trossard gets his second yellow card for pushing the ball away. Stupid yellow card. Arsenal very much a team on edge. This is the second time they have a player sent off for this offense. Arteta needs to calm his players down because those are stupid mistakes that you really don't need to make. And so it was set up in the second half that it would be a siege by City. How are they didn't produce many chances. I mean, yes, there was one great Raya save in there, but other than that, there was hardly anything happening. There were many, many shots, but hardly any expected goals coming from them. City had up to 90% of the ball, and it seems like Arsenal, who do have the best defense in the Premier League, arguably even the best in Europe, although Juve still has yet to concede, but I would at the moment take Arsenal defense over Juve. You thought they will see it out, and then it was a run by Grealish, the ball comes to the stones, and he puts it in the net. It's 2-2. What an epic game. Arsenal thought that they had the big win that they so cherished. They didn't get it. It was a blow, although I think they would have well lived with the draw ahead of the game. So yeah, who's the real winner? I guess we the fans, because that was a great game to watch. So what else did we have in the Premier League? We had Chelsea suddenly making sense and looking good. After a few performances, I think Maresca has formed something here. They win 3-0 at hapless West Ham. Lopetegui having a really bad start with those guys. With two Nico Jackson goals coming the first 20 minutes and then Cole Palmer adding a third one just early in the second half. In that form, Chelsea are Champions League candidate. After the first Champions League foray, Aston Villa had to play a Midlands Derby against Wolves. Found themselves down through a Mateusz Cunha goal. However, they late on turned around Oli Watkins gets an equalizer and then Konza in the 80th minute with a weird finish <laughs> makes it 2-1 well and then Duran adds another goal. He's also in really fine form, Villa winning 3-1. 3-1 is also a goal in which Fulham beat Newcastle, handing them the first loss of the season and Newcastle this time around don't look all that gelling, even though they had a relatively good start to the season. Goals came through Jimenez and Smith Rowe, who ran the show. Barnes pulled one back right after the half, but then late on, Nelson gets Fulham to deserve it win. Bournemouth could have struck very early, however in the end it's the South Americans who give Liverpool an absolutely deserved win. Luis Diaz scoring twice and then even Darwin Nunez with a brilliant finish making it 3-0 before the half and Liverpool see out an easy win for them. City rivals again cannot hold on to a lead, this time only 1-1 at Leicester despite being up 1-0 through Njaya. It was played in torrential rainfall slash hail as well. Late on Mavididi gets the equalizer for Leicester. 
like they did last weekend, Brentford score in the first minute, this time through Memo at Spurs. Spurs seemingly nervy? Not really. So Lanky quickly gets an equalizer and Brennan Johnson, who had received tons of abuse, gets the go-ahead goal for Spurs. Spurs very much the better team. However, Vicario kept the game a little bit tighter than it needed to be with making weird forays outside of the box and not being safe at certain points. Spurs in the end do get a deserved win when Madison scores the third one for theirs, but there were some nervy moments in between. Maybe Brentford could have stolen a draw as well. Meanwhile, United do not manage to put the ball into the net in the first half where they were really dominant at Crystal Palace. Then Palace go better and it ends in a goalless draw. The Ligue 1 weekend started with an 8-0 win by Nice over Saint Etienne on Friday evening and then never looked back. It was a mad weekend. We had for instance Lille leading 2-0 after 27 minutes. Shegrova twice on the score sheet only to find themselves 3-2 down to Strasbourg in the 66th. They get a late equalizer through a Jonathan David penalty. Rennes and Lens play out a 1-1 draw. Then former last player Keito Nakamura gives Reims the lead over PSG that is an equalizer by Usman Dembele. PSG also looks very tentative, Luis Enrique making too many experiments. Obviously, Monaco get a 3 1 home win over Le Havre, they stay level on points with PSG. We also had Brest after the first Champions League win getting another win in the league 2 0 over Toulouse. But by far the maddest game in Europe's top leagues this weekend has to be the Olympico between Lyon and OM. So many storylines, and that's the game that we all didn't watch, although we should have. This was the game to watch for sure. We have to begin. Well, we have to begin at the very beginning after four and a half minutes. Bellardi is already sent off for his second yellow card. OM playing for over 85 minutes with a man less. However, the Zerbi just makes a few adjustments and keeps the game open despite Leon having plenty of chances to take the lead and they had the biggest one. Hand penalty. Rather contentious, I would say. Lacazette sees his effort safe and on the rebound. It also doesn't go in. OM are nil-nil at the half time but that was only the appetizer if you would like. Gelletta Tsar, former OM player, gives the lead to Lyon in the 53rd minute and it seemed like they were going on to a win. Then a really weird ball by Luis Enrique and you have to watch the highlights on this. It takes a really weird trajectory, falls to Lirola who makes in the 69th minute 1-1 one, one, and then Lirola is also involved by another really curved cross and then Garcia with a drop kick 2-1 in the 82nd minute for OM who again played since the 5th minute with a man less. However OL, let's call them how they are called in France, are not giving up and they get an equalizer through Ryan Shirky, kid of Lyon, in the third minute of stoppage time and you see maybe they can push on now for the win, but right off the kick of the ball goes to the goalie, kicks out badly and Rowe intercepts the ball, runs on the net and gets a winner for OM. Absolute madness. This is one of the maddest wins that I have ever seen and I only saw highlight. Great game. OM level with PSG and Monaco top of the table might get spicy in France this season. While well, Sporting still look like they are very much untouchable, this time a 3-0 or promoted AVS football and Gürkeres again double on the score sheet. Benfica seem to have stabilized under Bruno Lage getting also a 3-0 away win Monday evening at Boavista. Goals came early through Pavlidis and then also Kirkji and then late on it's kept off by Cabral. It was probably the biggest game of the weekend with Eric Imres take on Porto after having won the derby against Braga. Porto however second half turn it on. Score also three times win also 3-0. Omar Dion scores a double in the 48th and the 59th and then Pepe, not the old Pepe, completes the scoreline. And wouldn't you believe it, it was a weekend of 3 nils for the big four teams in Portugal because Braga also won this time at Nacional. Goals also came late, Nierkite in the 77th minute, then Bruma in the 83rd and El Wazani just two minutes later. Charlotte also to Santa Clara beating Estrella 1-0, they're sitting fourth in the table. That is an unexpected team in the top four in Portugal.
I'm gonna start in the Liga to the bottom of the table where Sevilla lose to Alaves. Alaves getting the third win of the season. Real Sociedad again cannot score but at least get a draw at Real Valladolid. And Las Palmas on the bottom of the table thanks to losing to Osasuna that also get the third win of the season. And combined with Valencia getting their first win of the season at 2-0 over Girona who rotated out eight players. So Valencia's win this one thanks to two long range shot goals in the 56th and 58th minute. Big win for Valencia that one. Then in the evening Espanyol actually was looking quite well at Real Madrid even took the lead. It was counted as a good to our own goal and then Angelotti brings on Vinny Jr and he is the difference. Carvajal gets the equalizer then Rodrigo, Vinny himself and Kylian Mbappé with a penalty. Make it a convincing 4-1 score and for Real Madrid. A Real Madrid team that only scored one goal so far in the first half. All the other goals came in the second half so they turn it on late. The South Madrid derby ends in a 1-1 then Athletic Club take on Celta a game that I thought will be very entertaining. Gorosetta gives an early lead to Athletic Club. Aspas equalizes with a penalty. He actually scores the go-ahead goal, but it's called for offside. And Gorosetta just a couple of minutes later re-establishes Athletic's lead. Game is then ebbing and flowing back and forth. Both teams trying maybe Athletic Club slightly better. In the end, they get the third one through Jalo in the 80th minute. However, the most eventful game certainly was Barcelona's 5-1 win at Villarreal. A game that could have major implications. I mean, first off, Barcelona winning 5-1, playing some great stuff, Lewandowski being very much on target, scoring two goals in the first half. However, this was a Villarreal team that A, got very physically, especially with Laminia Mal, but also had three goals disallowed for very narrow offside calls in between. Perez pulls one back just before the half. However, the biggest action was probably the Ter Stegen, who was a little bit criticized after his performance in Monaco, gets an injury, is probably out for the season, which bolts not well for Barcelona. The injuries is probably the only real worry that I have for Barcelona at this moment because otherwise they're looking really really good under Hansi Flick. Second half Pautori re-establishes two goal lead for Barcelona then Lewandowski actually puts a penalty onto the post does not get a hat trick but Rafinha then seals the game scoring a fourth one and then the assist of the season so far a Trivella assist by Lamin Yamal. The way the balls works to Rafinha is just eye candy of the highest order. Meanwhile Atlet they get already a third draw of the season at Rayo, completely missing on the first half, being down 1-0, then turning on the second half, but it's a little bit too late, Conor Gallagher getting an early equalizer, but they cannot push for the win. This way, Atleti will qualify for the Champions League, but they will not push for a title. Too many draws. And then Mallorca strikes really, really late through Valeri yesterday evening at Betis for a comeback win. The two other goals came very early in that game through Los Celso who opened scoring their mid later Rodriguez. He Equalizes Mallorca, one of the revelations this season so far. Also, already the third win at the moment, they're sitting fifth. However, they have a game more than most of the opposition around them. We had a bit of a wild round in the Eredivisie and none of those wild games really involved the big three. That's also remarkable to say. First off, AZ continued their great form winning 2-1 away at Zwolle. They are the only ones that are kind of keeping up with PSV at the moment. The first wild game was an Utrecht 3-2 win over Willem Dwey, where Willem Dwey could equalize late in the first half despite being a man down already and then it's an own goal that settles the game for Utrecht. Ajax only managed a 1-1 draw at to come from behind but within five minutes David Klaassen had equalized for Ajax and did you know about Weichhorst is not playing at Ajax? Hmm, that I didn't. Then a week ago Herrenwein was beaten 9-1 by AZ. They win their local derby just a week later despite being a goal down to Groningen. Trenskov equalizes already in 12th minute then surely a red card for Groningen helps Herrenwein get on the winning streak. Nicolescu scores the goal, goal and there's another red card for Groningen. In the end Herrenwein back to winning ways. After the midweek win, Twente get another win, keeping a clean sheet, this time 5-0 at Almere. Again, it's Stein scoring the first two goals, but this time in the second half, Lammers from Wolfswinkel and Salah Dean add three more. 20 rising up in the table. After being spanked by Bayer Leverkusen, Feyenoord finally get their second win of the season, a rather unglamorous 2-0 over Nag Breda. And PSV had to fight a little hard, but in the end they also get a 3-1 win at Sittard and still a perfect sitting top of the table.
I want to start at the bottom of the table in the Bundesliga where both promoted teams Holstein Kiel and St. Pauli get their first points this season. Holstein Kiel thanks to a 2-2 at Bochum also get their first point and St. Pauli with a 0-0 at home to Leipzig in the last game of the round. We also had Heidenheim's great run coming to a big stop thanks to Freiburg who beat them 3-0 with Rizzo Doan and Vincenzo Grifo scoring the goals. However, ahead of the big clash next week between Bayern and Bayer. Bayern Munich are in really really good goal scoring form. Last week 6 at Kiel, then 9 against Zagreb, now they score 5 at Bremen. It was the Michael Olisse show who scores 2 on the 1st and the 4th. Of course Harry Kane also scores in between. He has scored now against every Bundesliga team he has ever faced. Musiala is on the score sheet as well as is Serge Gnabry. Bayern in really good form under Vincent Company, and for now things are calm in Bavaria. Defending champions by Leverkusen though take a page of the book from last season beating Wolfsburg at home with a last minute strike by who else? Victor Boniface. It was the perfect win for them. It was a perfect win. Wolfsburg twice had the lead. Leverkusen had twice the lead. It, Leverkusen were 2-3 down at the half in Kapia. And then as I said, Boniface turning it around for them. Crazy game that was. In the big game on Saturday evening with Eintracht Frankfurt getting a overall deserved 2-0 win over Gladbach with Larsen and Marmouche being on the score sheet. However, the most eye-catching scoreline is Stuttgart 5, Dortmund 1. Fully deserved. Stuttgart, after a rather rough start to the season, went to the Bernabeu, bossed Real Madrid for a while, probably should have gotten something out. Now they completely demolished Dortmund. After 21 minutes it was already 2-0 for Stuttgart. Undorf and Demirovic scoring. Mio early in the second half adds a third. Yes! Gittens then assists Girasi coming from Stuttgart. But then Stuttgart add two more. A very emphatic scoreline and I think soul searching is beginning at Dortmund. Things don't look as good as they might have just a few weeks ago. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day, bye!